We are back for our Monday Parent Mindset. And I'm here on the business page saying hello, about to hop into the parent group as well. And what we're, ha what we're doing today is we're going to try to figure out how to get the kids on board with chores. Yeah, because we're stuck at home with them and we need their help. <laughs> and when my clients say, you know, it's, it's one thing to like, <clears throat> you know, shuttle her off to school and then bring her back and then try to fit in one or two chores. But man, if, she, if we're home all the time, that has a real impact. Go ahead and let me know in the comments right now, something you've noticed that you just have to do more of because you're home all the time. Um, write it in the comments and let us know the ages of your kids. So for me, um, it would probably be laundry. <laughs> laundry and dishes 24 <laughs> seven. And uh, my, my kids are 21 and 24, my stepchildren. And um, if you haven't hung with me before, my name is Vanessa Callahan and I um, run a parenting group called Raising Our Resilience Parent Group in the Facebook space. And I also have year long um, immersion uh, folks whose parents who spend a year with me in a parent academy. And then I also do um, trainings um, regionally and even internationally, although right, not right now. <laughs> So um, we're here today to talk about like how to get kids on board with chores in a way that doesn't add more tension, more conflict, more power struggles, and also just sort of like um, is a really reasonable ask or response to being at home all the time. Um, and I wanna even edge into the idea that it could be fun and even pleasant and even an opportunity for uh, kids to learn essential life skills. Um, and why I feel like I'm qualified to share this with you, I'll just give you a quick story is that I have got, gotten a group of children, uh, 12, 24, 36, 48 children on board to clean the whole classroom, organize all the shelves, um, take care of all the class pets, set up and clean up snack, take care of class laundry, all the things that you can imagine that absolutely translate over to the home space, yeah? And we had a weekly cycle and we would get it all done. So if one or two pair, two teachers can get a group of, let's say on average 24 kids on board with weekly chores and getting them all done. We call them jobs. Um, you can absolutely do this at home with your one, two, three, four, however many children you have. Um, another story I have is that my father is one of 18 children. Yeah, 18. If you heard that, write 18 for a bonus point. <laughs> of 18 and um, 13th actually. And one of the things that he did was um, share some stories with me about what it was like to grow up in a household with 18 kids. And I realized it wasn't that far off from what I was doing in the classroom. Everybody had their jobs. One, one kid would go to the butcher, another kid would walk home the younger kids, another, another kid would set the table, another kid would help mom with, with cooking. And somehow they were able to cook enough food and get everybody like, you know, clothed and ready and off to school and back every day for a span of like, you know, collectively probably 30 years. Um, so it's absolutely possible. I tell you these big scale <laughs> examples so that you can say like, okay, it should be doable for, for me and my smaller scale example of my house, right? Now, I also want to acknowledge though that some of us are highly impacted right now. Some of us are working from home. Others are, um, you know, have kids with IEPs that have, you know, quite a, quite a list of different activities that you need to work in to keep their learning plan going. Um, some of us are just not doing well because we're extroverts and now we're stuck living like introverts and the stress level's high. So this is not, not to be flip at all about the um, impact that all of us are, you know, experiencing right now having been, you know, um, having, having our daily routine just totally changed right now. Um, uh, so that, that being said though, I do want my, my mindset shift here is to kind of take this as an opportunity as much as we also need to manage our stress. I have classes on how parents can manage stress too. But right now, one of the ways we can do that, one key way I'm gonna laser in on today is to get the kids on board with chores. Hi, Pierre, good to see you today. I'm glad you made it. Um, and uh, I'm gonna say hello to Pierre. So Pierre, I would love to know, and anybody else who's watching, um, what is it that, uh, what is a chore that you are successfully able to have the kids get on board with right now? Um, and what, what has been a struggle, okay? So what has been successful and what is a struggle in terms of chores, okay? And you can see if you're in the Facebook group, um, this question. I've got Spence here too. Hey, Spence. Um, so Spence, 
I would love to hear your hear, hear your answer to this. <laughs> See your earlier question. So one of the things I want you to, to do is just kind of tune into, hey, um, I actually, we actually have some success with being able to get some chores done um, at home. You know, it's not like a total like wash, right? Like maybe kids are happy to wash vegetables before like during meal prep, or maybe they're happy to, um, you know, like pick up clothes off the ground. Um, maybe they're happy to clear dishes off the table. So give us something that you're successful with. And the reason I'm asking that is like, I want it, I want other folks to see like possibility, right? Like maybe in your house, the kids are not necessarily helping with dishes and you're thinking, oh, they're too young for that or something. But then someone in the group is going to say, I have a five-year-old who clears the table and you go, okay, maybe I developmentally, my kid is ready for that. And I can start asking for that. Um, it's also a little space for us to brag as parents. Like, yeah, look, I got, my kid is on board with this. Um, we have to celebrate our wins too. It's also part of how we can frame our, frame our, our uh, <laughs> kind of our thoughts and our attitudes around being able to um, you know, add on or, or introduce new chores. We want to build off of what works. Okay. So please in the comments, let me know, even if you're watching the replay or the watch party, um, write, write in uh, one chore that the kids are on board with and one that's been a struggle. That's just like creates lots of problems, either because you have to remind them over and over again, or they just refuse to do it. They ignore it. Um, uh, it's even can create like power struggles or fights, you know, anything that's happening like that. I want to know about it. Tell me. Okay. In the comments. Um, looks like Spence is saying, yeah, thanks, Spence. Uh, we're succeeding with the dishwasher. The trick was to have the child do the whole thing. Ah, okay. So they really want to like own the task. No help, no sharing. All help or work share lead to arguments. So you've got some really independent, uh, you have some, your kids have, have a really strong independent streak here. And so like working with that and just being like, okay, well, if part of it is that they need to have complete control beginning to middle to end and not have any help, then you know whatever it is that you're wanting to add on next, kind of getting them to a skill level or a, you know competency level of knowing how to do the task so they can be successful, beginning, middle, and end all the way through. Really good tip, Spence. Hope other other folks are taking notes. That if you have a kid that is like really really um, grumpy about you helping them or about doing it with their sibling, try having them do it apart. I love that there was a tip built into that, Spence. Awesome. Um, would love to know if there's a specific chore that is a challenge right now, Spence, if you could write it in the comments, let us know. Um, and hi, Tiffany, good to see you here. Glad you made it. Um, it's always nice to have folks popping in. So if you're in the business group, um, business page, I want you to hop over to the, the parent group and, and request to join. And that way you can see the replay um, of the full thing because we're going to cut out in a couple minutes here. So if you want to see the whole thing, just come join us. It's just a way that we can keep in community and keep sharing ideas. And also you can access things like these trainings and contests and things. Um, we just love to grow that community in that space. So come and head over. Um, and you can do that by clicking, you know, visit group at the top of the Raising Our Resilience business page. All right, so let's break it down. Um, in, in the classroom, we used to call these jo classroom jobs or we would even create like practical life activities. And the idea behind a practical life activity is that there are activities that actually help us to skill up on things that will help us to be able to run daily life really smoothly. Um, I have met adults adult children, <laughs> adult children in their 20s who still don't know what to do with a dishwasher, don't know how to do their own laundry, um, not really sure how to scrub a pot or pan until it's actually clean. Um, and they kind of like miss this, they kind of have a gap, right, in life skills. Um, and the other thing that, that, so we don't want our kids to, to be that kind of roommate, right? Where you're like, oh no, they, they just use the kitchen. It's, it's a disaster in there. Um, <laughs> the other thing is, um, we also don't want necessarily to um, make make chores be like a big um, sort of let down, like like the the worst part of the day, right? Because what ends up happening is we end up having this really strange relationship with our own home space, um, where we're like rejecting um, the daily life of living in a space. <laughs> and guess what? Those things like keep happening. So you're pretty much like setting setting them up and setting yourself up for like 
having a bummer time in your own space and maybe even not even liking spending time in your own space, which right now is like not even optional. So let's find a way to get into like really positive um, sort of relationship with our own physical space and feel some ownership over it of like, wow, you know, look at look how what a good job I did. The, the table's completely cleared off and clean for the first time this week. And just kind of having a little bit of that like, yeah, that felt good. And if you're skeptical because <laughs> of the way that maybe your own relationship with chores, I want you to set that aside. Because what I've seen is a group of eight-year-old boys go to town for two hours scrubbing every single chair in my classroom. Like just go to town and have the best time ever, you know, scrubbing all, all of the pencil marks off and, you know, trying to get it completely clean using the hose to hose them all off. You know, these were like classroom chairs. So they were, you know, they were waterproof, but, um, and going to town and having the, a blast with it and actually feeling really proud. Like Vanessa, can you come see, like, how did I do on this? Like, what do you think? And I was like, well, you tell me, are there any pencil marks left? And they're like, no, I got them all. And I was like, yeah. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> You're like, that's not my kid, but it was. <laughs> Spence, your, your kid was in my classroom out there doing just that <laughs> several years ago. So I <laughs> so we want to be able to kind of bring in some of that flavor. And I also want to break it down, like how to, in how to reintroduce some of these, these chores that, you know, really don't feel great right now. Um, Spence is naming, you know, putting things away right? Like, oh yeah. And the blame shifting, like I didn't make that mess. I'm, it's not my job. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good one. I'm glad you brought that one up. So we're going to, I'm, I'm going to use yours as an example, Spence. So stay tuned. Um, so what I want, want to have uh, all of you walk away with um, is a sense that we can re kind of reframe our whole perspective on chores right now, have it be almost like a a renewal of the space, a renewal of our relationship with the space and with each other around shared responsibilities. So less conflicts, more cooperation, less power struggles, more harmony, okay? Um, and I will have a longer training later this month about setting limits and following through on them and getting the kids on board with rules and expectations, including chores. But right now, just we're just focusing in on chores. So here we go. The first thing is that I want you to really think about it as, as a, an opportunity to teach them an essential skill and make it a little bit less personal about like them helping you, okay? And you can keep that in there, but I really want you to kind of see the learning opportunity in having your kids um, learn, for example, how to properly load a dishwasher or how to scrub a pot till it's actually clean without scratching the, the, the coating off of it. I want you to think of it as an essential life skill. And when you think of it that way, it, it gives, I don't know about you, but I feel a shift between like frustration and like, why aren't you helping? You know, this is your house too, this is your job too, to like, oh, this is an opportunity for you to like be an awesome roommate slash partner slash, you know, <laughs> child for the next few months <laughs> and few weeks, um, but to like learn an essential skill and they can feel that shift in us. If we're like, why haven't you? They're already feeling you pushing and they're going to push back, right? But if you're like, hey, sweetheart, let's look at it side by side. Let's build some skills here. I really want you to learn. I want to teach you some really important things. And so what I would actually encourage you to do is to start with something that's a little out of the box and not as um, not an area of power struggle yet. Okay, so it could be something super interesting, like how to um, prune back a bush without killing the plant. Like that sounds like life or death, really interesting, right? And they get to like use some, a sharp, sharp thing, <laughs> the cutters with you. Um, learning how to uh, change a tire for older kids. And you really can do this as young as age six. They can still help and watch and, and practice. And once you loosen it, they can turn the bolts, right? Um, something really out of the box like that, that's not like a daily chore can be a great way to just sort of set the tone of like, let's learn this together. And even if you don't know how, like model what it's like to not know something, to wonder, to research it, look it up and then go try it and be a beginner at it. And it's okay to kind of struggle and learn and then have that satisfaction once you've done it, right? Um, it could be something that you just have never let the kids do, like stand at a hot stove and stir a pot because you're you, before you, you know, you maybe are stuck in there. I, the idea of them being too young to be near a hot stove. Well, it's like this, um, 
this sort of like new access that they have to a part of daily life, which they didn't have before. So it could be, it doesn't have to be out of the box, like really, really different from daily life, but at least out of the box enough that it's something that they haven't been asked to do yet. And that you can really frame it as, let me show you how. I'm gonna say it again, let me show you how. I really wanna teach you how. I, I wanna show you all the steps it takes to, to do this successfully, mow the lawn. I just talked to, um, to a mom this morning, a single mom, and she said that she taught her little seven-year-old how to mow the lawn today, you know, this last weekend. And he was so into it and so happy. And they didn't frame it as like, well, guess what's on your list now? You have to do this or else, right? It wasn't that sort of framing. It was more like, hey, check this out. Like this is a machine and here's how it works and let's try it together, you know? So that's the first one. Start with something that's not a struggle yet and is a little out of the box so that you can kind of break up that pattern of you have to do this versus an invitation to learn, okay? And what you're really framing there is that it's an essential skill that you're teaching, okay? More on this, if you're on the business page, more on this, if you join the parent group, come over, come hang with us, okay? And you can even play in our contests and learn more with us. Okay, so I'm here with you now just on the in the group and, um, Something, something I wanted to point out is that we had a contest uh, going from last week and um, I wanted to just double check to make sure I didn't miss any entries, but I believe that um, Jennifer Cornier, I think you are the winner of the, the contest. And so congratulations. Um, you shared with us your boredom busting activity. You even posted a photo, which was super cool. So helpful for us to be able to like visualize what it is. And you said um, you love the tortoise time idea for parallel play and that your biggest takeaway last time was to have it be different from what's happened in the past. Like being really clear of like why you can interrupt your mom and why during those tortoise time, like that co-working time, which if you wanna learn more about, make sure you check out the training from last week um, and at, come in with a signal of, of interruption. So there's a pause and a wait in between. Awesome. So glad that you uh, shared that takeaway. And then she also shared a boredom busting activity, which was um, a non-screen time activity in picture form, which is like all these boat, these little pictures that they drew, are like a list of things that they can do that's non-screen time, including um, playing with cars, doing frisbee, walking on the block, listening to music, petting the dog, and she even has some of her own. So she has her own non-screen time activity list. Awesome. So Jennifer, you won, you won the contest. Congratulations. Um, so we'll be sending you some Amazon gift cards so you can do some online shopping right now as we're all stuck inside. Beautiful. Okay, so back to back to the topic of getting on board with chores. So first one is to frame it as you're, you're going to show them or teach them an essential skill and start with something that is not a power struggle right now that maybe is a little out of the box, something that they usually don't have access to or is maybe not like a daily chore or a weekly chore that they, they see. Um, and so the next thing I want you to think about is um, turning it into some kind of a challenge or a game. And the reason we do this is because oftentimes like chores feel a little open-ended and like there's not a whole lot of um, sense that you're of a beginning, a middle and an end. And sometimes when we can break it down into steps and um, when we're teaching it, we can also build in a little challenge that is a motivation hack. Um, several of you joined the group recently, uh, the parenting group and you selected boosting my child's motivation as your number one thing you want help with. So here we go. Make it more interesting, add a level of interest. Um, we, already, we already did a competency boosting part of motivation, which is one key um, by helping them skill up and actually learn, the, learn it and break it down in steps. So if you wanna go ahead and type it, that into the comments, the first key, which is treat it like learning an essential skill, teach an essential skill. And that's really, that will really help you. So when you break it down to steps, you can also build in what I would say like a challenge or a game. So that's key number two, make it a challenge or turn it into a challenge or turn it into a game. And I can kind of see how Jen did that with her post, right? Where she, hold on, where she, um, where she had her activities and her daughter's activities. And it looked like they filled up the whiteboard and whether she meant to or not, like it was kind of like building a little game. Like how many things can we put on this whiteboard of our ideas of uh, non-screen time activities? Well, you can do that with chores too. Like for example, there's the, the most favorite one that people um, have had a lot of success with. My parent, my personal clients and my immersion parent academy clients have had so much success with is beating the clock. 
right? So you're either going to try to PR, which is like your personal record, your, beat your last time, or see how much you can get done in a certain amount of time. Okay. I'm going to repeat that. And if you, if you want to write it in the comments to help you remember, go ahead. So you're going to go for your PR, which is your personal record for how, how many minutes or it takes to finish a chore and see if you can beat your last one. Yeah. And then the other version is how much of this can you get done in a certain amount of time? So it's like, I wonder, I wonder how, how many, um, how, how many articles of clothing I can fold in 30 seconds go, you know, you turn on the timer and it's like, you know, <laughs> and you can do it with them. And then you can say, and here's a timer, honey, you can do it. Like when, when they, when it's time for laundry, you're like, do you want your timer? So you can, you can try to beat the clock. Right. Um, and the, so, so you can set amount of time and try to see how many you can finish in that set amount of time. So two versions of beat the clock, which I think are super fun. Another way to make it into a challenge is, um, and I love this one because it anchors them into the activity, which is something we talked about in the last training. Tell them, I wonder what will happen if I leave the room and I come back in, you know, 10 minutes, let's say, I wonder if you if you can finish the whole thing. And it's just like this little bit of edge, just a little challenge. Like, oh, I wonder if you can, do you think you could? I don't know. I guess we'll see, you know? And then it's like, and then you at, check in with them. Like, is there anything you need before I go? check my email, <laughs> go sit at the desk, anything? Okay, you think you got this? All right, let's see. And it's just this sort of like playful way of saying like, I challenge you to do this on your own without me even monitoring this. Of course, you wanna pick something that you think they'll be successful with. It wouldn't be the first time they, they do a thing, but something that they've practiced a bit. And you're like, this is like a nice up level of a challenge. I wonder if you can do it by yourself now. I'm gonna leave and come back. And when I come back, before I do, I'm going to say, I'm coming in one minute and you kind of let them know. And then you come in and you check it out and you can do the celebration of like, wow, look how much you got done. You were so close. Or like, you did it. Amazing. I'm so proud of you. High five. Right. And just build in a little bit of that challenge in there. Um, and there's so many ways to do that, but that's, those are some to get your ideas started. So in the comments, I would love to see one, two, three, one, two, right. First one is um, teach it like an essential skill rather than you know, telling them they have to do it and bossing them around and managing them. <laughs> Teach it to them, breaking it down in steps, practice with them, right? And then turn it into a challenge or a game. And then the last one, which I think is really important for kids sometimes is like, they need to know that this is the time in the routine where we are all doing a thing, right? So it could be, this is the time when we all get dressed. This is the time when we all get ready for bed, brush our teeth. So the younger they are, the more important it is that we are doing almost like either with them or, or side by side, the same thing they are. And there's like, it's time for that, right? With older kids, you can do this too. It actually helps, especially with sibling fairness, Spence, to get back to something you were saying. Um, it really helps if this is the time where we all contribute and it's not about the quant, it's not something like how much they get done because a four-year-old and a 10-year-old are going to get different amounts of work done and have different tasks. But if we all spend that 30 minutes working on the house, picking stuff up, it doesn't really matter whose mess it is. It just all needs to get done while, but we're all helping. So we're all doing our part. Like I always had so much more success having kids clean up after themselves during cleanup time than in intermittently throughout the morning or intermittently throughout the afternoon because it's cleanup time. And this is the time where everybody around you is doing it. And you almost feel awkward if you don't participate, right? And so I, the short version of that is like, make it a party, you know, <laughs> like make it a little cleanup party, turn on some music, clean it up. I mean, I'm, I'm remembering some scene in like, I don't know, some movie like where all the kids are like, everybody like cleans the whole house and, you know, the, the headmistress is like playing the piano and uh, it's like an orphanage. I think it might've been Annie or something 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 a little friendlier than that but it was like the clean the house day and everybody did it and so you kind of make turn it into a bit of a party you know you'll have some feet dragging at first but then, and then be silly like have some fun like like hold the hold the broom and like pretend it's a microphone and sing along with lip sync to the song or you know um <laughs> and have a good time with it like it doesn't have to be chores don't have to be a bore i like to say and as a matter of fact 
I, I like to even throw out the word chore and just call them like jobs, like home jobs. Like we have home projects and home jobs to take care of. And when we do our work, like we get to have more time to play kind of thing. And we can make our work feel like play. So that's my third hot tip is to do them side by side so that there's like this designated time where everybody's pitching in and that will really eliminate a lot of the issues around um, kids kind of being like, that's not my mess, that's not my mess or, you know, how come they don't have to do it? It's like, actually everybody's doing something right now. So I don't know what you're complaining about kid. <laughs> like I got my job, mom's got her job, dad's got her, his job, whatever, right? Grandma's got his, her job. We're all doing something right now. And if you build it into daily life, it goes a little, or at least weekly life, it does go a little bit easier in terms of the kids having, anticipating it and knowing it's coming up. Um, and they tend to be more on board with us when they can anticipate something coming up and are like kind of mentally prepared for it. So they're not like in this groove of us on doing something else and not, you know, as easy to kind of like an immovable object to kind of steer them into the activity. Um, so uh, troubleshooting with you would be really fun. If you want to ask questions in the comments, I can follow up with you. We can even start messenger chats for your particular question. Um, and so it'd be great to, to have a chance to, ask, you know, you're like, yeah, but Vanessa, what about this? Or what about that? My kid always refuses, even when I do this, like, let, tell me, give me your hardest problems. Let, let me help you. Um, and even better, like create a post in the group or write it in the comments right here. So we can um, jam and, and other people can hear our, you know, see our conversation. Um, so it was really good to meet with you this week. Uh, no contest this week, but we will have one next week. Um, and as a primer for that, if you want to get a head start, um, try to catch your kids being good, whether it's, <laughs> whether it's um, you know, helping with a chore, like we're talking about now, or doing a chore for the first time, um, whether it's like uh, spontaneously help, helping a sibling, um, whatever it is that they are, you're welcome, Spence, um, whatever it is that they're doing, catch them being good sometime in the next week and, and then the following week. And we're gonna have a little bit of a photo contest around that, take a, take a quick photo um, and you'll get a head start on the contest. Uh, more to come on that later this later in April, we're also doing a setting limits that stick um, three day masterclass, which is like the one of the longer forms um, that I give uh, in this group. I just do a few times a year. So you're not gonna wanna miss that. So look out for that event and I'll be sure to invite you. And if you want the tip sheet from these talks, go to the link that's in the, this po the post of this and sign up for the weekly digest if you don't already get it. Um, because I'm, I'm, having, I'm having my assistant transcribe it and I'm, I'm thro throwing together um, a quick tip sheet so you, ca you can refer back to it in your inbox, okay? So <clears throat> my gift to you in this pandemic parenting time, <laughs> parenting during the pandemic, another shout out to Sarah Ivey. Um, if you wanna go and check out some home activities, she's collecting them in her Pandem pandemic playtime for kids, totally free group. I just love that she's done that. She came to my retreat and went home and made an awesome routine with her kids. She shared about that uh, recently in the group. And then right now, now she's got this really great collection of about a thousand parents like chiming in of really cool activities that they're finding. And there's more and more every day and every week, but virtual and hands-on. So really cool group to get some resources and um, come back with me. See you next next Monday at noon for more more tips on uh, parenting during the pandemic. Until then, lots of love and admiration. You got this. We got this together. Um, let us know how you're doing in the in the comments, and always throw up a post with any question or challenge you have, and we'll support you. Okay, lots of love. Take care. <laughs>